If you ask my advice, I will always tell you to prioritize quality over quantity. So when I say coding fast, I'm not speaking of outputting maximum lines of code in the least amount of time. Speed alone isn't the metric you want to chase. However, being able to produce good quality, lean code at a faster cadence is something all software engineers should aspire for. Because that kind of speed gives you the agility to make multiple round trips in the feedback loop, iterate quickly, experiment, and if necessary, fail fast. So what is preventing most developers from being effectively fast? After working on hundreds of projects on numerous domains for companies of various shapes and sizes, I've identified six areas that heavily impact your coding speed and agility. And in this video, I'll tell you how you can improve those areas to be able to code faster than most developers out there. Hi folks, my name is Utsav. I'm a software engineer based in Seattle, Washington. I have over 20 years of experience in the industry and I'm currently a senior software engineer at Microsoft. If you are new to this channel, my goal here is to help software engineers get the best out of their careers by mentoring them around five five key pillars of career development, technical skills, engineering efficiency, mindset, entrepreneurship, and financial freedom. So if that sounds interesting, please consider subscribing and follow me at Utsavais for behind the scenes and monthly Q&As. So the first thing to do here is to make sure you understand what you're building. Gather the requirements, read through them, make sure you validate that with uh, other developers or senior developers. One of the common mistakes that junior developers tend to do is jumping to code right away. Avoid that urge because the moment you jump in and make your way through a little bit of code and you realize that you're not building the right thing, you have to backtrack and do the same thing over and over again. And that wastes a lot of time. So draw a few diagrams, even get a few opinions on a napkin design from a senior dev over a coffee chat or something like that. Stop going down the rabbit hole just to backtrack again. This wastes a lot of time. Essentially, you don't want to commit to coding even a single line of code until you know exactly what you're building. Form a hypothesis about what you're going to build. Focus on simplicity. Don't try to over-engineer something right off the get. Build a simple proof of concept to see if your hypothesis actually works. Focus on the happy path. Don't worry about things like, what if this happens? What if that happens? You'll take care of that. But given an ideal situation, given the happy path, does it work? That's the step to validate your hypothesis that you formed when you're going about understanding the design. In the Agile Developers Handbook, there's a saying called building the tight thing versus building the right thing. The first step here is to make sure you understand that you're building the right thing. And then the second step here is to still validate that concept. You're not in the step of building the tight thing yet. So, and this is again, a common mistake that inexperienced software engineers make is they want to over-optimize they want to spend hours making sure it's the right design patterns, make sure everything is perfect. If you're not building the right thing, again, you're going to go down the rabbit hole and backtrack again. So this kind of relates to the previous point. Avoid spending all this time, make a simple POC and then iterate slightly larger version of this if you just don't want to do the happy path or the requirements state that you kind of have to take care of some edge cases and corner situation consider thinking about an mvp uh, mvp is basically a minimum viable product so talk to your pm talk to your lead and think about what the mvp for a particular project is but not only that building things in iterative increments is beneficial because you can also do things like experimentation a b testing incorporate your learnings for for each iteration, right? Say for example, you're building something that customers will use, like an app or something. If you try to build the final thing right away and the customers don't like it, you've wasted a bunch of times and now you, you have to decide either the project is a failure or you have to spend more time in redoing all of that. Instead, build a very basic thing first. Give it to the customers, get feedback, maybe give it a different version to a different set of customers, get their feedback and see which one does better. That's A-B testing, right? So doing less code upfront helps you actually work faster and build the product right the first time. So this in turn helps you use the data you've gathered to actually improve the product while you're coding the product, making your overall process way fast. The third one that I don't see many people doing is they don't log everything as they are coding. And often I find logging is the step that happens right before the pull request is sent. Log everything since the very beginning. And this is even more critical in the world of distributed systems and microservices where things are spread out out all over the places and you have to log to make sure that you can monitor everything and see what's going on with your request or with your data flow, right? Um, this is essentially called observability. And a simple way to implement this is by extending your existing production logger. Just override the methods that log into the production and just have them log e 
either in your temp database or even locally, and then just work through your code. And if they're extending the same interfaces, once you're ready to go, you just swap that local or your intermediate version of logger with the production logger and you're ready to go. It's logging in the production database. And the problem with adding logs later is that you've lost context of what workflow or what coding workflow you were in, right? So now you're trying to guess where you should add code and it's never a good idea to go back and change code because every time you're touching or moving or editing code, there's a potential to introduce bugs as well. So log as you go and trust me, this will save you so much time debugging and so many headaches that your overall coding process will be way faster. So the next thing here is not really related to coding directly, but how focused you can be and how long can you code for. Let's face it, we live in a world of distractions full of notifications, buzzing everywhere, social media, and even your own company communication platform like Slack or Teams are very chatty, so you can easily be distracting. A great thing you can learn about is called flow state, and it's a practice of getting into a state when you do any kind of meaningful work, but especially for coding, where you are so zoned in that you can avoid all distractions pretty well, and that state of flow helps you be fully immersed and focused on what you're doing. So, so being in a flow state and coding for four hours, you will get way more code done and better code written than if you spend 15 hours in a distracted environment. The most effective software engineers that I know can write amazing code blazing fast and can completely turn off the world and immerse themselves for a good block of time to code. And I kid you not, they get five to 10x more code written than the rest. I have a full video explaining how flow state works. I will link it in the description below. So check it out when this video ends. Also, if you wanna go even a step further, there's a book called Indistractable by Nir Eyal. I'll link it in the description below. Give it a read, especially if you find yourself struggling with a lot of distractions. Okay, the next step people often overlook is ergonomics. If you wanna write code that's fast and be fully focused for hours, you need to make sure that you are comfortable and avoid fatigue as much as possible. But you don't have to go out and buy an expensive chair or spend a lot of money. Just spend a little bit of time learning about the ergonomics and get decent enough peripherals and chairs and table and learn how to adjust them. Like your leg needs to be 90 degrees. There are enough videos in YouTube about it. Just learn about that and make sure you have a space that is not gonna fatigue you really quickly so that you can be comfortable and focus on the actual important thing. While in the topic of ergonomics, I also want to mention something that is very obvious. It's touch typing. You'll be surprised how many developers I notice and they literally type with two or three fingers or their fingers are crisscrossing each other. One, that's not good for your wrists because that's like asking for carpal tunnel. But second, typing fast matters. If you can type 30% faster than anybody else, that means that if you write 10 hours of code, you'll be 30% faster, right? It's a small thing, but it matters. So learn touch type. You don't have to look at the keyboard. You basically use the two indents to get your reference. And then you kind of divide the keyboard in two halves. You don't lift your fingers too high. You basically type very effortlessly without looking down. That increases your speed of typing. If you want to learn touch typing, just Google touch typing practice online or something like that. And there are many websites for free that will just teach you how to do touch typing. And you just need to practice maybe 30 minutes a day every morning. At the end of seven days, you'll be typing like a pro and your word per minute will probably go up from like, I don't know, 70 to 80 to 140 per minute, which is a huge advantage. And in the topic of improving your overall ergonomics and typing and all that, stop using a mouse. I see so many people doing everything from GUI and like moving their mouse around. One, it's not ergonomic because your hand goes sideways and it creates a stress on your shoulders. Second, mouse is just slow. So when whether you're in a Mac or Windows, just learn the keyboard shortcuts. Both have a pretty good search feature. Keyboards can execute everything, or at least learn the shortcuts so you don't have to keep wasting time going to the mouse. This is probably the least discussed thing in the engineering community, health and fitness. I don't know if this is a poor depiction by Hollywood and how uh, geeks or tech people should look like, but unhealthy eating habits, lack of exercise, and things that are related to all-nighters and long hours and basically unhealthy habits all around seem to be common stereotypes for software engineer. You need your mind to be sharp to be able to write great quality code and also be able to do it fast. So exercise, proper nutrition, and adequate sleep is critical for that. And you'd be surprised how many times you'll end up writing a complex bit of code and kind of like getting into this weird spider web of sort where you've already tried different things and you've landed somewhere, but now you've lost context of the overall picture, but you still don't step back and think about the higher picture. You keep going at it. That's the lack of perspective that 
that comes when you're overworked or tired or things like that. Go get a good night's sleep, come over the next day, you'll get a completely different perspective and just solve that thing. I get it. Sometimes you have to do what you have to do. There are deadlines, priorities, milestones to reach and you have to pull that occasional all-nighter. That's fine, you know. Just don't make it a habit. Find ways to prioritize your health even if you're short in time. For example, I have a really busy schedule and I don't have time to cook every single meal all the time, but I also don't want to order food from the restaurants or make frequent trips to the grocery stores. So I've been using Factor for almost two years now who have also sponsored this video. I personally like Factor because they offer nutritious, delicious, flavor-packed options on the menu each week to fit a variety of lifestyles, whether you're keto or calorie smart or vegan plus veggie or protein plus. All of the meals are prepared by chefs and approved by dietitians. Each meal also has all of the ingredients to make you feel satisfied all day while meeting your goal. And the meals are fresh and never frozen and they're ready to eat in just two minutes. All you have to do is heat it and enjoy. And if you get hungry during the day, want to eat something to fuel your coding efforts, then they also have many nutritious options for snacking like smoothies and juices. My personal favorite is the mango smoothie. So yeah, head over to factor75.com or click the link in the description below and use code UTSA50 to get 50% off your first factor box. Okay, the next thing is to learn to use the right tools in the right way that makes you more effective. I see a lot of people install the ID or install another tool and just use the default for everything without customizing it for their own habits and needs. For example, if you use a code editor like VS Code, invest time on researching extensions that can help you be more effective and faster. AI tools like GitHub Copilot can help you quickly write things like string manipulators and regex. An extension called Prettier can arrange your code to make it easier to visualize. GitLens can help you track down your code changes even faster. You get the idea. Set up your space to make it work for you so that you not only are fast and effective, but also you enjoy being in that space, right? Keep these seven things in mind the next time you start a coding project, and I'll promise you that you'll see massive improvements in your coding productivity and speed. Check out this video to learn about flow state that I mentioned earlier if you're interested or if you get distracted all the time. And check out this other video where I show you how I set up my laptop for maximum development productivity. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.